I am going to show you how I do this brine step for our cured pork chops. Given how our days have been going, I thought it was time to indulge ourselves in one of my favorite meals. It's usually a meal I serve for um, special occasions, just because it requires a little extra planning on, on our part and it takes up a lot of space in the fridge. So, um, and the romesco sauce that I make with it is just so good. It goes with everything, but I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. Today we're just going to talk about the brine step. And what I'm going to ask you to do is start with uh, two cups of water in a, in a Pyrex measuring cup if you have it, or some kind of um, vessel that you can microwave um, easily, or if you, you know, use hot water, that's fine too, um, from a kettle. I'm using a really big container to brine the pork, and I know many of you may not have a container this big, which is fine. Um, in that case, you can also use a big stock pot like this, and just put a lid over it or some plastic wrap over it, because this brine requires about three quarts and another two cups of water in addition to these vegetables and the pork chops, which is gonna cause the water level to rise. So you want a big pot or a container like this. If that's still not feasible, you can also use a couple really big Ziploc bags. Just mix everything into in a big pot like that and then pour the brine liquid and ingredients into the Ziploc bags and divide up, say, three pork chops in each bag. And you can also do it that way. That'll take up less space in the fridge. You will run the risk of potential leakage if the bag breaks or if it's not sealed well. So I would suggest when you put it in the fridge, if you're using your, if you're brining in a Ziploc bag, to put it inside a bigger container or on a, on a shallow plate so that in case it leaks, it catches the, the brine. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to microwave this for two minutes. I actually don't want it to be super boiling because I do want it to cool down in order for us to put the rest of the ingredients in because we're going to be putting in some raw meat and I don't want it to cook the meat. So I'm just going to use, put this in for two minutes. And while that is heating, I'm going to measure out my salt and sugar. And straight into my um, into my container that I'm going to do the brine in. So um, you're going to make your brine in a container um, so you can dissolve. That's big enough to dissolve all this um, sugar and salt. So I'm going to start with a third cup of sugar, just here. Okay. And what the brine does is it will not only flavor the meat, but it'll tenderize it too. Which is, um, it'll really permeate all the way through um, in throughout the pork chop. So I'm doing one third cup of sugar and a half a cup of kosher salt. And I always use kosher salt when I'm cooking because kosher salt has just the right amount of saltiness. It's not too salty. It's not as salty as, say, iodized salt. Um, and it sprinkles really well. It's, it's light and it you know, it spreads over everything. It's a relatively uniform in size, so the kosher salt works just fine. So I'm putting that in here. Um, while I'm waiting for the water to heat, I'm also going to start measuring out my spices. So I have a tablespoon here. I'm going to start with fennel. So we're going to use, let's see, how much fennel? We're going to use one tablespoon of fennel. Okay, these are fennel seeds. They're kind of green. And they smell kind of licorice-y, but um, when it's going to the brine, it'll it'll it really you know mellows out if you don't like the licorice flavor. I'm gonna add in two cloves. You can smell the cloves; they're pretty powerful smelling, um, pretty powerful spice. So I'm just putting in two. You can put in a few more if you want, maybe three. Um, and the ingredient I left off the list, if you have it, is bay leaves. I'm adding two bay leaves, if you have it. Um, if you don't have it, it's fine. But I'm just going to, I'm actually going to leave my bay leaves out right now. We don't need it quite yet. So I'm going to go get my water. And I'm going to pour this straight over my salt and sugar, because I want it to start dissolving. Okay. So while we're preparing the rest of our brine ingredients, I want the sugar and the salt to start dissolving in the hot water. 
and it didn't come to a boil, it's just pretty hot. Okay, I'm just going to kind of stir it around in here. Okay, and it's already starting to dissolve. I'm going to set this aside, continue on with my spices. And the last spices I'm going to add are these juniper berries. Juniper berries have a really unique flavor and smell. They're the, uh, the berry that's used to make gin. So for your parents who like cocktails with gin, um, if it's, it'll smell like, like gin, kind of like, almost like pine trees too. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons into my mortar and pestle. So I'm gonna say a note about my mortar and pestle. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can also just put all your spices into a Ziploc bag like this, and then take like a, um, a rolling pin and just crush it that way. So if you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can also just use a Ziploc bag and a rolling pin and crush it. You can also just kind of roll it like that and that'll crush your spices too. We don't need them super crushed. We just want them coarsely, coarsely crushed, just to kind of um, release, enough to release the flavor from these spices. So I'm just taking my mortar and pestle here and I'm just coarsely, just kind of chop, um, pounding on them a little bit, okay? And it doesn't have to be ground or anything, but this is just to release the flavors from the, the spices. Okay. And again, you can also do this with a rolling pin and a plastic bag. So the pork chops I got, I um, specif specified about one and a half inches, and you know my pork chops are about one and a half. Some of them are a little thicker than others, and so those I'll cook a little bit longer. Um, some are maybe just an inch, so I'll know to cook those a little shorter tomorrow. So just make sure you pay attention to the thickness of each of your pork chops, and then these pork chops can sit in your fridge in the brine for overnight, 24 hours. You can also sit in the brine for as little as four hours. So if you don't have time tonight, you can also do this um, tomorrow morning too. Okay, so I'm just crushing my juniper berries. I can smell the berry smell. Um, the fennel seeds aren't getting quite as crushed, but that's okay, because fennel seeds, there's quite a bit of it. It's pretty two tablespoons of it, or just, sorry, just one tablespoon of it. It's pretty strong. Um, so two tablespoons of juniper berries, uh, one tablespoon of fennel seeds, and two or three cloves, and that should be enough. So there, I can definitely smell the juniper berries. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just pour this straight into my uh, sugar and salt solution, just like that. There. And I'm going to add my two bay leaves that I forgot to tell you to include in your list of ingredients. It's not a crucial ingredient. If you have it, that's great. I'm going to throw those in. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our vegetables. So this is a fennel root, and we only need half. Um, so I'll show you how I'm going to process this. This is a fennel root that has the fronds still attached to it. So I'm just going to cut the fronds off, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to toss these into the compost. I'm going to rinse this really quick. Just rinse the outside of it. Okay. And you only need half of this. So you can save the other half for a salad. You can thinly slice it and make it into a salad. Um, this is also not that big. It's not a very big fennel, uh, fennel root. But so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slice it. So I'm just gonna slice it like that. Okay. And then throw this into my brine mixture. I'll save this for later. Um, this onion, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the ends off and peel it. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to slice our onion, too. So, peel our onion. I know um, it's crazy days these days. So do whatever you can to 
indulge yourself. You know, make a favorite meal, make comfort food. Think about what makes you feel good um, and eat it. I've been doing more cooking and baking these days. So here's my onion. You can slice it any which way. It doesn't have to be super thin. Just enough to, again, this is just to flavor the brown. goes straight into our brine mixture. And the last thing is our carrot. I'm not even going to bother peeling the carrot. I'm just going to kind of wash the outside really well. Like this. And I'm going to cut the, the end off the top. And then I'm just going to slice it into diagonal like that. Just like this. I just slice it on the diagonal, big chunks, just like that. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna add are these, these herbs. I have um, a little bunch of parsley here, that goes in, and four sprigs of thyme, roughly a little handful. So it doesn't have to be perfectly measured out. Um, I specified about four sprigs of parsley, but everyone's parsley uh, size might be different not an exact science really <laughs> um, it just you know you just want your your um, veg your herbs your vegetables and your spices to all mix together and you also can um, once you get used to using a making a brine you can also use different types of spices and herbs too you can add cinnamon you could add cumin you could add um, garlic if you want you could add different types of herbs rosemary okay so we have our sugar and our salt dissolving in the water and our vegetables, spices, and herbs all mixed in. And the last thing we're gonna need to add now is our pork chop. So I have, I'm making six pork chops because um, I like leftovers. I, I, just, I just do. So I'm gonna add my pork chops straight into the brine, mix what I have with the brine right now. Okay. And again, this is why we need a big tub or a big container. Um, this is about the thickness. These are about an inch. Um, a couple of these are a little bit thicker, but I sometimes even get chops that are as big as, um, this is a bigger one. This is about one and a half inches. Sometimes I even get pork chops that are even bigger, like two inches. Okay. And just a note too, we're going to be searing these in a cast iron or in a, in a saute pan. But you can also grill these. If you have a grill handy or even if you have a stovetop grill, you can also grill these pork chops too. So we're going to add our water now because we have to, this is a pretty concentrated brine mixture. So we're going to add about three quarts of water. Three quarts is, uh, one quart is four cups. So I'm going to add three of these of cold water, the coldest water possible from your kitchen sink. straight in very carefully so it doesn't splash. So one. And I want to add enough so that it submerges the pork. I want to make sure the pork is really in that mixture. going to push the pork in there and make sure um, the, the salt and sugar mixture is mixed in with the cold water I just added. Okay, make sure all the pork is, is, um, is inside the, the mixture like this. I can't, I don't know if you can see, but this is what it looks like. Okay, and I'm going to put a lid on it. And then this goes in my fridge. So if you're using Ziploc bags, you can also very carefully put in your pork chop, say three pork chops or two pork chops per bag, um, and then pour some of this mixture into each bag and then place it on a plate or in a big bowl 
so that it can sit in your fridge and marinate overnight. So that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, we are going to be making romesco sauce and a sweet potato, um, roasted sweet potato. So I think we're going to have a really nice dinner tomorrow night to soothe our souls. It's a crazy time. Make sure you're staying indoors and doing whatever you can to indulge yourself and staying safe. I'll see you tomorrow.